well, it's not like it used to be. You know? <laughs> Today, the town's largely intact. But people who live here work in Balclutha, 10 minutes away, where they also do most of their shopping. So for the time being, at least, Kaitangata doesn't need its general stores, its miners' union building, its public library, its picture theater, or its billiard saloon. To discover what's been destroying the coal mining industry and killing off towns like Kaitangata, all we have to do is take a trip up this river, up the Clutha. Seventy kilometers upstream is the Roxburgh Dam, which came into operation just about the time the government closed down the main coal mine at Kaitangata. Once people had access to cheap hydroelectricity, they soon forgot about coal. And who can blame them? Electricity was clean, convenient, and then still cheap. No wonder coal lost its place as a source of energy for coal ranges, coal gas fires, steam locomotives, and steam boilers. So far, Roxburgh is the only dam on the mighty Clutha. But another 40 kilometers further upstream, at the mouth of the Cromwell Gorge, near Clyde, another more massive dam is under construction. The dam at Clyde will create a man-made lake, submerging the Cromwell Gorge and reaching 20 kilometers from Clyde to well... And this is only part of a project that will bring about probably the most dramatic transformation in the New Zealand land... ...at the end of this century. Constructed on the upper Clutha, there'll also be dams and power stations at Queensbury and Leggett, and on the Kawara tributary of the Clutha at Kawara and Gibston. The massive upper Clutha project will not only produce a lot of power, it will also bring impressive and spectacular changes to the central Otago landscape, drowning old landmarks as well as creating new ones. The bridge over the Clutha into Cromwell will be one of the first landmarks to disappear beneath the new Lake Dunstan. The waters of Lake Dunstan will lap around my feet and they'll drown the old business heart of Cromwell that dates from the feverish hunt for gold in the 1850s and 1860s. Often in New Zealand, nature has flooded towns, but never before has man himself quite deliberately drowned a town centre. That is a matter of great concern to the people who live in Cromwell. For New Zealanders as a whole, a bigger issue is what happens when there are no longer any sites left for such large-scale power-generating projects. When Lake Dunstan overwhelms all this and we have to find still more energy, then I believe we'll have to take a second look back downriver at those coal reserves beneath the hills at Kaitangata.
Tangata coal is ideal for generating thermal electric power. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see Kaitangata on its feet again by the year 2000.